In this video, we're going to set up a side-to-side -side VPN connection between FortiGate 1 and FortiGate 2. And this time around, we're going to use the loopback interfaces to terminate our VPNs, so the loopback should be our tunnel endpoints. In the beginning, we only have a single internet connection via our primary ISP, so that's where we're going to start. But the important thing, of course, is to make sure that the loopback 0 uh, address 1234 can reach the remote address 567 and 8. So let's have a look at that first. We want to ping 5678 and sourcing from 1.2.3.4. And we have reachability. So now we can proceed and start with our VPN configuration. So we're in FortiGate 1. We go to IPsec and create a new one. Call it Tunnel 0. The remote gateway is 5678. And our source interface for, the, for this VPN is loopback 0, our local tunnel endpoint. We'll use Fortinet as our preset key. I version 2. We'll use AS256 GCM PRF SHA256. And on phase 2, we'll use the same. Let's not forget to, to enable or to negotiate. We're done on FortiGate 1, let's have, uh, have a look at FortiGate 2. And to set up our tunnel on FortiGate 2, we go to VPN, IPsec Tunnels, and we create new. I'll also call this Tunnel 0. The remote gateway would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Hanging off loopback 0 interface. 14 net IP version 2. AES256 GCM. And we do the same for phase two and enable auto negotiate and click on OK. And now let's have a look at our security policy on both devices. We have a security policy on FortiGate 2 that will allow all traffic. And this is just for, for this for the purpose of this lab, so that it's one less thing for us to do. And on FortiGate 1, we actually have the same. That's our policy allowing any traffic to anywhere. And we know that our routing is in place because we have our default route via the primary internet connection. Let's see if our VPN is up. And it looks like our VPN is up. And with our VPN connections being up, now let's route our LAN connections. On FortiGate 1, we go to network, static routes, and our destination is going to be 20.20.20. .20 .20. In this, we want to use the tunnel interface as our exit interface. That will be slash 32. And we do the same thing on FortiGate 2. We route to 10.10.10.10. With the exit interface being our tunnel interface. Okay, now on FortiGate 1 CLI, let's do our reachability test. Exec ping options. Our source would be 10.10.10.10. And we want to reach 20.20.20. And we have reachability. Now our VPN is working across the primary internet link. Now let's work on the secondary link. And on FortiGate 1, our next hop address would be 10.160.100.254. That's the next hop address on the secondary internet link. So we can reach our secondary ISP's next hop IP address. I believe now we can create our default static route, which is going to be a secondary path. Config router static. I'll just call this number three. Edit three. Set device to, this would be port two. And our gateway is 10.160 dot 100 dot 254 and this being the secondary link we have to lower the priority our primary link has a priority of 5 this one would have a priority of 10 and our secondary default static route is in place but our primary has a lower priority that means it's always going to be preferred just much like we did in the previous video we have to set up a link monitor so that it helps us with the automatic failover between the two links in case the primary fails over. Config system link monitor. Once again, I'm going to call this primary. Our source interface will be port 1. 
and our destination server is going to be 10.160 it will be this IP address over here 10.160.10.254 and our source IP would be 10.160.10.1 now for the next one our secondary Now that we've got that in place, let's test and see if it's actually working. Diagnose system link monitor status primary. The indicator we're looking for is alive. State is alive and we know that it's working. Let's check the secondary. It's also alive. So I'm happy with this config on 48.1. Let's do the same thing on 48.2. So in Fourier 2, we have to ping to 1060200 to validate and see if this link is actually working, if we can reach our next hop IP. Two five four. Now for the secondary default gateway. Config router static. And our gateway is 10160.200.254 and our exit interface is port 2. Most importantly the priority will be we'll make this 10. If you don't change the priority by default the priority would, would be 1 and that would just break our routing. We need to define the primary as the primary and secondary as secondary and we've just done that. And that path is now visible in the raw table. Now for our link monitor configuration. Let's start with a primary link probe. And once again, we'll call this primary. And our secondary probe. Our primary associated to port 1, secondary port 2, and 10160200 for the secondary, and 10160.20 for the primary. This looks okay to me. Now let's just val validate it. Diagnose system link monitor status. Primary says it's alive. Secondary says it's alive. So these are some of the moving parts that we need to put into place and we know that our VPN is working. Now it's time to do a reachability test from LAN 10 to LAN 20. Exec ping options source would be LAN 10. I'll set the repeat count to say 1000 and then let's ping to 20.20.20.20. And we have reachability. So while this is going on, I'm going to shut down the Gigabit Ethernet 00 on R1. And the interface is down. And so is our ping. Um, this is not a proper or full um, simulation of the internet now our ping is going this way and with us shutting down the gig zero interface it's now going this way but the, um, the, the the firewall on the other end is still sending the traffic the other way so we have an asymmetric routing so i think what we have to do is maybe also shut down one of the interfaces i'll shut down gig zero one on on r2 let's try that Interface GI001 zero, zero shut. 
Yes. And our VPN connection resumes now, this time going over the secondary internet link. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.